Hi and good evening and welcome to everyone who is joining uh, me for the devotion tonight. My name is Pastor Ian and I want to welcome you uh, and welcome to our Glenbrook Church family and to others who are joining us uh, for uh, tonight's devotion. We've been doing a series called Journeying with God. And the purpose uh, behind this for myself has been to be an encouragement and an inspiration uh, for us all as we journey with God through this time of uh, COVID-19 pandemic. The metaphor uh, that life is a journey is something I think that we can all relate to because is it not true that like a journey, life has its twists and its turns, its detours, its delays, its surprises, its mysteries, its discouragements, and yes, um, its uh, defining moments. And as we take a spiritual journey through our lives, we know that we can experience our own relationship with God, and in that, uh, know that our relationship can grow and deepen in trust and in love. Now this evening, I want to take a look at another journey that is taken by uh, the Apostle Paul. We've taken a look in the past with Moses and Abraham and, and Jonah, and also the disciples of Jesus. Tonight, I want to take a look at uh, the Apostle Paul. And particularly in Acts chapter 9, where Luke speaks about and talks about uh, Saul of Tarsus, as Paul was known, and how he was feared and uh, zealous as a leader within uh, the synagogue, uh, within uh, Judaism. And he was a Pharisee who was really searching and rounding up those who were associated with um, people of this new movement that were called the way, people who believed in Jesus of Nazareth as being this new Jewish Messiah. Well, as the story goes, uh, he was traveling along the road from Jerusalem to Damascus with arrest warrants for those who were claiming to be uh, disciples of this new Messiah, this Jesus of Nazareth. And it is there on that road uh, to Damascus that he has a life-changing encounter. Luke uh, records it in this way. He says, Now as he, Saul, was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? As readers, we know the source of the voice. We know who it is. But imagine Paul thinking as he is going along this road, on this mission for God, who is this that's speaking? What's going on here? As he is trying to follow through on his own call, suddenly there's this bright light, there's this voice that asks this very personal question directed right at him. Why are you persecuting me? Talk about being stopped in your tracks, uh, being thoroughly confused, uh, being blinded even in the process. At first, we sense that Saul really doesn't know what to make of this encounter. He asks, Who are you, Lord? Saul no doubt would have known about God's encounters from the Hebrew Scriptures, the way that God uh, revealed himself to prophets and others uh, within the stories of the Hebrew Scriptures. And maybe this could be a sense of where he was coming from when he asked this question, you know, who are you, Lord? It could be one of those moments, those epiphanous moments. But the reply comes, I am Jesus, who you are persecuting. We notice in Jesus' answer, his own solidarity and his own identity with those whom Saul is searching out and persecuting. It is personal. It's not just that Saul is persecuting those who are followers of this Jesus Messiah, but it is Jesus himself who he is persecuting, which of course it dawns on Saul that if this is the case, then this Jesus who he thought was dead is very much alive. This encounter with Jesus was the beginning of a transformation for Saul, who later, as we know, becomes Paul the Apostle. He was one who persecuted those who believed Jesus was Israel's Messiah, and he did so with, as he says, murderous threats and a zealousness for God. 
to one who preached and eventually was martyred for believing that Jesus of Nazareth was not just Israel's Messiah, but was God's Messiah to the world. Jesus was the self-revelation of God for all people and for their salvation. So the encounter on the Damascus Road was a defining journey, a defining moment. It was a wake-up call for Saul of Tarsus. He writes later on in Galatians about his own experience and also his own call in this way. He says, For I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel that was proclaimed by me is not of human origin, for I did not receive it from a human source, nor was I taught it, but I received it through a revelation of Jesus Christ. Wow, those are some powerful words. So after this encounter of Jesus on the Damascus Road, Luke tells us that Paul, because he was still blinded, uh, needed some help in order to actually get to uh, the city of Damascus. And those whom he was traveling with led him uh, to the home of a believer by the name of Ananias. They, Ananias took care of Saul until his eyesight returned, which, on, which when you think about it, is, was quite an act of great courage and, and also a risky faith on Ananias' part. Now, there's a lot of themes that we could focus in on uh, with regards to Paul's uh, encounter of Jesus on the Damascus Road. But maybe there's something that we can take away for uh, tonight. And it would be this, that no one is beyond the transforming grace of God. And that transformation can take place anytime, any place, to anyone. The biblical scholar N.T. Wright, in his book, Simply Christian, uses an analogy that I like. He says, it speaks of waking up in the morning for how some people come to Christ. And for some, it is indeed a dramatic, defining experience. And for others, it is a gradual, transformative experience. He goes on and he writes this. He says, Waking up offers one of the most basic pictures of what can happen when God takes a hand in someone's life. There are classic alarm clock stories. Saul of Tarsus on the road to Damascus, blinded by a sudden light, stunned and speechless, discovered that the God that he'd worshipped and re revealed himself did so in the crucified and risen Jesus of Nazareth. John Wesley found his heart becomes strangely warm, and then he never looked back. He goes on and he says this, that they and, and a few other very famous uh, transformations uh, were a part of what we know even within the Christian world. But there are a million more that, uh, that don't hit the headlines. Uh, conversions, transformations that uh, speak of, of people who have come to Christ and Maybe it has taken months, maybe years, maybe even decades, during which they aren't sure whether they're on the outside of the Christian faith looking in or on the inside looking around to see if it is all very real. But as he says, as with ordinary waking up, there are many people who are somewhere in between. But the point is, and this is the important point, is that there is such a thing as being asleep and there is such a thing as being awake. And it's important to tell the difference. And to be sure you're awake by the time you have to be up and ready for action, whatever that action may be. I'm not sure where you are on your journey of faith, my friend, tonight. But as we go to sleep, perhaps the question for all of us to consider is that question of the Apostle Paul in his encounter of Jesus on the Damascus Road. Who are you? Lord, who are you? And when we awake tomorrow, it is not just to a new day, but it is also to the risen Messiah, Jesus of Nazareth. And all God's people said, Amen. Let's bow in a word of prayer. And let's pray. Our gracious God, I know that there are many who are listening tonight, and they are on different places in their encounter with you. God, there are those who are still searching and seeking and uh, looking around and, and trying to um, 
get a sense of what the Christian faith is about, what a relationship with you is all about. So God, I thank you for your patience. I thank you for the ways in which you come alongside of all of us and gently draw us into uh, your presence. And so I ask that you would do so for those who are um, at this stage of the road, the journey of faith. God, there are many who are uh, have been traveling uh, this uh, Christian road and this road of faith for, for many years, and we rejoice in that. We give you thanks for that. God, we thank you for the confidence and the assurance that we have in our faith. Yet we also pray that we too would not take it for granted, that we would uh, indeed be continually working and uh, being those who, who are participating as your disciples um, in uh, your kingdom work. And so, God, we ask and pray that you would continue to encourage us on our journey tonight. And God, for all of us, as we uh, go to sleep tonight, uh, grant us a good night's rest. Grant us a refreshing uh, time. God, we pray that you would indeed uh, be with us. And as we awake tomorrow. Remind us that we are not simply awaking to a new day, but we are awakening into, once again, uh, the risen Messiah. We thank you for this. We thank you the, for the ways in which you encounter us. In the name of Christ, we pray. And all God's people said,